This week we're looking at gaming mice, the terminology, the sensors, the grips and associated forms. Let's start by looking at some of the common terminology you will see in relation to gaming mice. Firstly is DPI slash CPI. This is dots per inch and counts per inch respectively. DPI is taken from printing actually and is basically the number of pixels moved on your screen per inch. However, this is not really the correct term to use. CPI is the number of counts the mouse will report to your computer per inch of movement. So either way, the higher the number, the faster your cursor will move across the screen. Bear in mind that this is not sensitivity as that is a Windows setting which basically applies a multiplier to your DPI or CPI and should always be kept in the middle setting for best performance which is incidentally a multiplier of 1. The polling rate is measured in Hertz and it is the rate at which the mouse reports its position to the computer. Commonly 1000 Hertz for a gaming mouse but can be only 125 Hertz for a regular one. With a rate of 1000 Hz, this means the mouse's position is being updated 1000 times per second. The ASUS ROG Gladius notably has a polling rate of 2000 Hz, although it would be very hard to tell the difference unless you're a real pro. IPS is inches per second, though not to be confused with in-plane switching from a monitor, is a measurement for how well the mouse can keep up with high speed movement. Exceeding this number will cause your mouse to become jerky or to stutter. I wouldn't expect this to be much of a problem really unless you have an insanely large mouse pad and like to zip about very quickly. FPS, as in frames per second as we all know, is closely related to IPS and is the amount of frames the mouse sensor is capturing every second. Exceeding this will have the same effect as with the IPS. LOD is lift off distance. This is the distance you have to lift your mouse before it stops tracking. A gaming mouse is likely to have an LOD of around 2mm, so you can quickly reposition without accidentally shifting the cursor. Although, of course, actual distances may vary by manufacturer. Maximum acceleration. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's the maximum acceleration the mouse can take. This is measured in G and is commonly around 30G for most modern gaming mice. Like IPS, this is unlikely to ever be a problem for the large majority of gamers. Next, we have mouse acceleration. This adjusts the speed of your cursor in relation to how fast you move your mouse. So if you move your mouse halfway across your mouse pad slowly and then repeat it just much quicker, you will have moved much further the second time with mouse acceleration. This is generally considered to be not a desirable thing whilst gaming. Next we have angle snapping. Having this on will make your mouse move in a smoother way, so to speak, as lines are made straighter. This is of course, like mouse acceleration, very bad for gaming. MCU is micro control unit, found in pretty much all mid to high end gaming mice. This takes the data from its input, so the sensor and clicks, and sends it to the computer. In some mice this will also be able to store profile and CPI information, etc. So let's talk sensor types. There are two types of sensor, optical and laser. Optical sensors use a normally red LED with a light detector to track the movement of the mouse. Fundamentally, optical sensors are taking photos of the surface below very quickly and comparing them to track movement. A laser sensor uses an infrared laser diode, so it can't actually be seen, and while it does work in a similar way to optical mice, it's much more complex in how it works compared to an optical sensor. Now as I want this video to be easy to understand, we should move on to what both optical and laser sensor mice are like to use. Now this is something I know people can argue about back and forth and is very subjective, as often a good point of one type is just a dislike of something on the other. For instance, some people say that laser is better because it has higher DPI, but of course this doesn't make an optical mouse bad as a result, just non-preferable for that person. So let's test the characteristics of each one. Optical mice have a generally more natural stable feel to them. They have no recalibration when the mouse is lifted up, so it keeps a more consistent feel while gaming. However, it's not as easy to use on different surfaces, like your leg for instance, but if you're just using it on a mouse mat, then this will not be an issue. Also, the CPI will not go as high on an optical mouse than a laser. Laser mice offer very precise tracking, which is very good for pro gamers especially. They are usable on all surfaces, although best when used on a hard mouse mat in particular. They allow for very high CPI settings, so often up to 8200. However, they can have acceleration and or stuttering issues. Newer laser sensors from someone like Avago do claim to have stopped this though, although the jury is still out on that one. 
another part of the mouse that is pretty subjective to is the actual switches used. Now most decent gaming mice nowadays will use Omron switches and they are widely regarded to be the best, but of course they're not the only ones out there. This Zowie mouse for instance uses Huano switches which tend to have a little bit more resistance to them than Omron ones. Before we talk about the grip types, I just want to quickly touch on the form factors available in gaming mice. We have right handed, so with the finger rests on the right like this one here, left handed, the same but with the other side, and ambidextrous mice that are basically symmetrical and can be used with either hand. Okay, so let's take a look at the type of mice grips commonly used. These are palm grip. As you can see, this is where you rest your entire palm, or most of, on top of the mouse. This has lots of contact points and thus offers great precision, but with less agility for fast response movements. Also, this is the easiest of the mice groups and is the most commonly used one. Mice designed for palm grip tend to be fairly big to comfortably fit most people's hands. The next one is claw grip. To do this, you have the lower part of your palm on the back of the mouse and have your fingertips in a claw-like shape on the buttons and the sides. This gives good control for moving fast across the screen and is generally very popular with RTS players. A claw grip mouse will be quite short and stubby like this Cooler Master Storm Spawn. The final grip is tip grip. With this grip, you use your fingertips to hold the mouse, similar to claw grip, just without resting your lower palm on the mouse. This makes it very good for fast movements, but not great for precise ones, and it can be quite fatiguing on your hand if you haven't used this style before or often. A tip grip mouse will basically be the same as a claw grip one, as the characteristics required are very similar. Small, short, and light. Again, I want to point out the mice are very subjective to the user and I really recommend trying them out if possible rather than judging from someone else's opinion. Okay, so I hope this video has helped a bit. Be sure to share it if you think someone needs gaming mice explained to them. Thanks for all the watching, liking, sharing and commenting. Leave me a comment down below if you must tell me what an idiot I am because clearly optical mice are the best or that I'm stupid because it's so obvious laser mice are the only way to go and of course any other comments are welcome thank you all for watching again subscribe for more weekly videos and i'll see you next time